Good morning, family of Christ. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. What a beautiful day it is this morning. Amen. We just want to give God praise and glory for this amazing rain He has sent us. He's busy watering your seed. And I hope you guys have been planting because it's soon time to harvest. Amen. God sends the rain so that your seed can grow. Amen. I just want to say welcome to each and every one that is joining us this morning. Everybody that's joined in, sitting on your couch, in a car, wherever you are, and you just joined us this morning, I just want to say we, we, we appreciate it. And we hope today that God will just lift you up with His Word, because this is why we do this. Amen? Yeah. Because we want to give God, we want to learn from the Word of God this morning. We want to understand His Word and the power of of his word so to each and everyone that's joining us live and from facebook we just want to say welcome may the lord lift you up this morning and may may you just give him praise this morning for opening doors and if it's not open yet just know that the lord is protecting you and at the right time a door shall be open um if you knew on the uh, if you knew first time watching just let us know we would like to welcome you and wherever you're watching from, let us know from where you watch. We would like to know where the word from God is going. Amen. And then one more thing. Please help us share this word this morning. Just put your share button there. After the teaching, just share this word with us. And let's get God's word out there. Amen. Let us pray. And let us see what God has for us. I'm going to do a teach. Uh, last week I sp uh, spoke about speaking God's word. And I'm just doing it part two because God has just an amazing word for us this morning. I'm really excited, especially to the ending. Um, beautiful revelation that I received from our Almighty on Friday evening while we had Yam, Young Adults Ministry, and most God just revealed something because of the word. And I wanna I can't wait to share that with you. Let us just pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Heavenly Father, we lift your word up here this morning and we want it to be our word. We want to be within the word this morning. Lord, I pray right now that you will touch each and every one that is watching this morning, Lord. I pray that they will be so full of fire to go into your word this week, Lord. After this word that you have given me, Lord. Lord, let, us, let them want to yearn more for your word this week. Lord, where there's any doors open that the enemy is bringing doubt right now, that they don't, don't believe this word, I pray that you will seal that off with the blood of Christ, Lord. That you will just mold them so that they can believe the word of God. Lord, we love you, we honor you, and I pray that each and every one, especially new members, old members, Lord, you know what they need. You know the miracles that they stand in faith with. For Lord, I pray that you will open those doors for them this morning, Lord. Lord, we honor you, we glorify you, and we want to worship you this morning. Reading your word is an act of worship. Understanding your word is an act of worship, Lord. And after we worship you, let us go and serve and preach the word of God, Lord. Lord, we honor you this morning, we glorify you, and we are excited for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, like I want to say, speak God's word part two. I'm so, I'm, I'm ready for this word, and I hope you are excited. I hope you are in a place of expectancy to receive the word. Now, to speak the word of God, I want to. I've got two things that the Lord has spoken to me this week, and the first one is relationship equals miracles. Why are we still, well, why do we believe? Do we believe in Christ because we want a relationship or do we believe in Christ because of his miracles? Because he is a God of miracles. Family of God, if we look at the word relationship, it tells us it's the way in which two or more people or things are connected. Amen. And then the miracle is an extraordinary, extraordinary and welcome event that is not explicable by nature or scientific laws, and it's therefore an attribute to a divine agency, meaning it's a mystery, it's a sign. Now last week we spoke that oil is a symbol, it's a sign, it's a miracle, amen? 
So the oil is God's word. We read it. I hope you enjoyed us last week because God's word is the oil. I mean, that is the mystery. That is the sun. And this is why I want to continue. But the first one that I said about relationship was it is connected. It is the way which two or more are connected. Now think about it. How do we get connected with God? It's through our relationship. But how do we allow God to be connected? It's because we allow the word within us and we allow Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is the one that connects us. Amen? Come on. Holy Spirit and God's word connects us and this is how we can have that connection with God. If you believe in His Word, you believe in Holy Spirit, that connects you with your Father. But if you don't believe it, you are not connected. You are drifting. Remember we did a teaching of the anchor family and the anchor needs a rope. You have the boat, you have the anchor, but if you don't have Holy Spirit that connects God and you, you drift away. Amen. And this is why we want a relationship because we want to be connected. Amen. We don't want to be set apart from God. But the heart so family of God is a lot of people is not connected. They want God. They, they do believe in the miracles. They want miracles. They want doors to open. They want things to be done for them. But they don't want to believe. So they have the miracle. They hold on to the miracle, but they don't hold on to the relationship. But if you don't have the relationship, what about the miracle? Because if you have a relationship, the miracle that is God's sign, it's His Word, will connect you. Amen? But I don't want to carry on. Let's read. Let's read. Judges 6, 7 verse 10. I'm going to run around. I'm going to go with a lot of scriptures this morning. I'm, we all know about the Israelites and Gideon and how God used him. But I want to focus on certain things in Kings, uh, in Judges. Sorry. When they cried out to the Lord because of the Midian, the Lord sent, prophet, uh, sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you, out, I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from Egypt and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, this is important. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Emirates in whose land you now live, but you have not listened. You see, God takes us out of certain things, family of God. God takes us out of our um, situation. God allows a breakthrough in our lives, miracles to happen. And He tells us, don't worship other gods. What does He mean? He means is don't go back to where I took you out. If I took you a play out of drunkenness, don't go and get drunk again. If I took you out of your drug addiction, don't go and use it again. If I took you out of adultery, um, lustfulness, you know, you had, a, you had a lust, you had an addiction of porn, and God said, but I rescued you from there, don't go back there. Because when you go back there, family, you worship other gods. Amen. Why? God said, but I rescued you from all these things, oppression, depression, uh, addiction, slavery. And yet we go back and we worship that thing that God has taken, taken us out of. And he says, but I told you not to. Amen. So now we understand, family of God, I'm going, I'm going to speak about relationship first. And I want to speak about miracles. And I want you to stay connected this morning because this is important. So now God says he has rescued us. So now, he, that's a miracle on its own. That's a sign. That's a miracle. When God takes you out of your addiction, out of slavery, depression, anxiety, that was a miracle. Amen? Amen. Now look at Now Judges 6 verse 12 to 16. Like I said, I'm reading so we can understand relationship equals miracles. The angel of the Lord appeared to him, said, this is Gideon, because Gideon was at a place where he was facing uh, grain and then he was hiding from the emirates and the angel appeared. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. You see, they rebelled against God. They turned their backs against God and when God sends his angel, he appears and he approaches him with love. 
a mighty warrior, mighty hero. I mean, when God appears before you with his word, it's never a word of um, bringing you down. It's never a word to, to tell you how bad you are. God appears before you and he says, I, I love you. You're my son, you're my daughter. And that's how the angel approached Gideon. And he says, the Lord is with you. You see, we don't always realize that God is with us. Why? Because the enemy has blinded us. We, we don't believe God is with us because we're not truly connected to His Spirit, with His Spirit, Holy Spirit. We're not connected to God, and this is why we can't believe that God is with us. If I have to tell somebody that's going through a season and they do not, they are not connected to Christ, not connected with Holy Spirit, I tell them, don't fear. God is with you. You think they're going to believe me? They're going to say, how can you say that? How can you say this to me? How can you say God is real? How can you say God is with me? Because look what is happening to me. Family of God, I cannot force connection. It is your own will. You need to decide if you want to be connected or not. Amen? Amen. Okay, amen. So, he says, the Lord is with you. Verse 13 says, Sir, give me your reply. If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Hey, I just said to you, any unbeliever, anybody is going through the season, if you're going to tell them, listen here, God is with you, don't stress, He's going to comfort you, He's going to take you through. You're going to say to me, because of that disconnecting, this connection that you have with Christ, you're going to say, where is God? Now look at what Gideon replied. If the Lord is with us, why is, has all this happened to us? Now in the beginning, we read that the Lord says, you have worshipped other gods. You've turned your back. I've, I've delivered you from slavery, some oppression and all that, but you have not listened to me. And now Gideon says, why is this all happening to us? And look at what he says. And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. You see, the thing is, family of God, that you was focused. He says, if God is with us, where is the miracles? You see, if God is with me, why am I not getting breakthrough? You see, there's a disconnection. He says, now the Lord has abandoned us. The Lord has not abandoned you. Listen to me carefully this morning. The Lord has not abandoned each and every one of you. No, you have disconnected yourself from God. You have taken that plug out of the wall. And you have, there's no power. And now you wonder, why is God, why is these things happening? Think, where, where was it when you turned your back against God? You turn and wait and worship worldly things. I rather want to be in the walls. I rather want to go get drunk with my friends and have a talk with them than be connected with God. But when you go through the season, God, where are your miracles? Where are you, God? You see, it's your relationship that connects you, that you need connected with God. The miracles will be there. The signs, the wonders will be there. Just don't be, get yourself disconnected because of fringe, because of worldly promises. Keep holding on to God's word. That is a sign. That's a symbol of God's will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Family of God, verse 13 says, Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why is this happening to us? Family of God, like I said, we turn our backs. And I want to show you an example. And this is a, it's a very hard word, especially what I'm going to give you this morning, is, you know what? If you are well off, if you are a well off parent and you can give your kids anything, your kids can ask you a thousand rand for, for the weekend and you just 
take cash out and you give it to them. And if you tell them you love them, they're going to say, oh, I love you too, daddy. Because why? You are a supplier. Amen? But now, I'm going to tell you, take that money away from them. Stop spoiling them and just say, you know what, I can't spoil you anymore. Even though you can, but just say to them, I can't give you what I used to. But here's a hundred rand. Yes, 200, not a thousand, but just 200. You know what? I can't buy you that now. I can't buy you those Nikes. I can't buy you those Adidas. I can't buy you these name brand clothes. But let's go to Mr. Price. Do you think they're going to love you? You see, sometimes God doesn't really, uh, doesn't always open the doors because He protects us. Amen? God doesn't really open the doors that we want to be opened because God needs to protect us. Yes, we need to uh, say we need 15,000 a month and God says, no, but I'm going to give you 30,000 a month. Are you going to love God? Because you're standing in faith for 50, but God is just providing 30,000. Are you going to want to have that relationship or are you going to disconnect yourself? You see, your children, if they truly love you, will expect accept what you give them. They will appreciate what you give them. But if there's no love, they will start disconnecting themselves from you because you don't provide them what they want. And this is what I say. Family of God, God wants a relationship. Yes, He wants to bless you. Yes, He wants to give you what you want and need. But if He's not going to give you what you want, you're going to, I promise you, that's just how the flesh works. You're going to start disconnecting yourself from God. Because now, He's not doing things your way. You see, the Israelites turned their back towards God. They turned their backs towards God and they started worshipping the God of Emirates. Emirates. And God says, but I've, I've done all these things. And Gideon said, Gideon said to the, the, to the Lord, but if the Lord is with us, where's the miracles? Hey? If God is with us, why have we been locked up? Why have we gone through what we've been going through? And now in the season that we've been through this year of 2020, have you think about it? Have you disconnected yourself from God because of what has happened? Because you didn't see miracles. Family of God, I give God all the honor. And I'm not, I'm not saying this because I want to be a holy smoky. I say it because I know what it is to be connected with God. The season of 2020, was during lockdown, there was a time that we, we, we started doubting. And then the Lord prompted to start spending time with you. Bible study, worship sessions, prayer sessions. And then we started connecting with God again. And because we started connecting with God, we did not go without. We saw signs and miracles that only God can give us. Why? Because we did not allow the enemy to disconnect us with God. We stayed grounded. We stayed in His Word. We spoke about certain things, we prayed about certain things, but we stayed connected. And because of that connection, God came through. Now there's a lot of people that did not, then you say, but did you, then you think that you stay connected with God. Family of God, I know we all want miracles. We all want things. But the most important is your relationship. Any spouse, any marriage, any husband and wife will tell you it's to stay connected. Love each other. Yes, you bump heads, but love each other. Examine one another. Build that relationship. I love that my wife and myself, we take a Saturday and we just spend time with one another. We started that during lockdown, just after the, uh, the, the president opened level three, I think. And then we realize we need time. We need to, to be connected with each other. We need to work on our relationship with each other. Stay connected. And that is how God is. He wants you to be connected with Him. 
Don't push him one side because you don't see miracles. Amen? So, and now how do you stay connected, family? It's through the Word of God. It's through His Word. Amen? I want to show you something now. I want to give you scripture. I want to show you the gospel. 1 Kings 17 verse 1 and I want to speak now about Elijah so now I'm jumping to Elijah Elijah proclaims a drought so we can see how, how upset Gideon was because they, they started worshipping other gods and they didn't see God's miracles and they thought God was abandoning them but actually they disconnected themselves Amen. And I want to show you the power of God's word. Amen. And this is why I'm going to Elijah. 1 Kings 17 verse 1 speaks about Elijah proclaims, proclaims, he prophesies a drought. And Elijah, the Tessabite of the inhabitants of Gahid, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dough no rain these years except at my word now that, that's right if i said at my word there won't be rain people's going to say what this guy's got pride how can he say by his word and yeah elijah said there won't be rain except at my word now family of god that's not pride why because remember when you allow God to constantly oil you with his word, the word becomes one with you. You are the word. Amen? Because the word is within you. And this is what Elijah is telling us. I will speak a word. I, if I speak the word, it will rain. He, there was no pride, family of God. He had God's word within him. He made he had God's word one with him. He was connected with God. So he says, except at my word, knowing the word of God was within him. He will speak it. You see, God says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move from there to there. You can say, why? Because you are prophesying, you are giving a prophetic word that comes out of God's word to a mountain, to a situation. And this is what we can read in the 1 Kings 17 verse 1 is that Elijah says, except at my word, knowing that he is connected with God and God is going to tell him when to speak. And he made God, he made God's word. You see, and that can only happen with relationship. That can only happen when we are joined with God. If you don't believe me, listen to 1 Corinthians 16 verse 17 it says but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him meaning connection I've got a relationship I can speak God's word I'm going to see a miracle why because I have faith in God I have faith that the word of God is joined within me why because there's one thing that is allowing us to be connected it's Holy Spirit. So now I can speak the word of God because I am joined one with God because of one spirit. But if I worship other gods, I'm not one with Christ. I cannot speak the word of God because there's a disconnection. But if I'm connected, I can make God's word my own. That word is mine. Why? Because God has given me the word to speak. There's no pride, family of God. This is not a place of I'm going to be proud. No. I'm going to make this mine. This is my word. God has given it to me. It's an inheritance. It's a hair. It is given to me as a gift. And I'm going to make it mine. And I'm going to speak it as if it's mine. But there's no pride because God's word will never come back void. God will get the glory. God will get the honor. Why? Be because I am one with God. I am one with Christ. Through his blood, through his body, I am joined. Through Holy Spirit, I am connected with God's word. But if you don't want to make it your own, you're not going to be connected. 
You must make God's word one with you, within you, so that you can speak God's word. Amen? So this is why Elijah says, when I'm going to give word, this rain will stop. When I'm going to give word, something's going to happen. Mountains going to move. Sea is going to be departed. Come on, family of God. When God speaks within me, I'm going to speak it out in the atmosphere. It will happen. It will come to pass. Why? Because I'm connected. Amen? Mm -hmm. So Elijah knew his relationship with God and he knew the power of God's word. And that is why he says, nothing will happen through anybody. It doesn't matter how many prophets. Because if you go into 1 Kings, you will see how Ahab had a lot of prophets, false prophets. And God and Elijah knew they were false prophets. Amen? Amen. Why do I share this? Because when we build our relationship with Christ's family, the word will automatically prepare us. It will connect with us. It must be a connection. If there's no connection, it's just going to be a word. It's going to be like a U magazine that you read and it's not going to do you much. But if, it, if there's a relationship, there's a connection, you know God speaks here. You know that there is something in my spirit that God is telling me. Amen? Amen. Now listen now. So I have went out to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of the mountain of Carmel and bowed down to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. He went to the upper room. He went in peace to pray. Then he said to his, said to his servant, Go and look towards the sea. The servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times, seven times Elijah told him to go and look. Family of God, just think about it. Seven times, seven means completeness. Elijah prayed till it was completed. You see, the, the word the Queen says, he sent his servant. Seven times to go look for what? A symbol, a sign. Seven times you went. How many times do we pray our situation? How many times do we pray and wait upon the Lord? We pray and then we see nothing happens. Yeah, we don't, the Bible doesn't really say if it was one day, two days, or three days, or seven days. They say, the, the Bible says to us, that he sent forth his servant seven times. So, okay, and we don't know how long Elijah prayed for this. You see, the thing is, family of God, we do not pray a thing through. We don't pray until it's completed. We stop off when we say, God doesn't want to answer our prayer. God, uh, this is not from God. Um, we give up. You see, Elijah could have sent his servant, and the servant said, okay, there's nothing, in Elijah could have left it. But he waited. He waited. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re reveal this to you. But he, he, the last thing is, we are not supposed to give up. Don't give. Don't stop praying. If you know God has given you a vision, if you know God has given you something, but God needs you to pray it through, to till it's completed. Seven completed. Seven means completion, completeness. We don't pray till it's completed. No, we stop halfway. And I want to ask you this morning, family of God, if you start praying and you stop because you don't see God, stop praying until you see breakthrough. Don't stop now, okay? Now, if you remember last week, listen to Zechariah 4, verse 6. The golden lampstand and olive trees, and the angel who was speaking with me came back and awakened me like a man who is wakened out of his sleep. He said to me, what do you see? I say, I say, I see and behold a lampstand, all of gold with its bowl, full oil on top of it, and it's seven lamps on it with seven spouts belonging to each of the lamps which are on top of it. And there are two olive trees by it. 
one on the left and one on the right. Amen? Both. And the other on his left, supplying continuously with oil. Continuously with oil. So there were seven of it. Seven. So I asked the angel, why were... And so I asked the angel, who was speaking with me? Who was speaking with me? What are these, my Lord? The angel who was speaking with me answered me, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. Then he said to me, this continuously supply of oil is the word of the Lord. Saying, not by my power, not by my, nor by power, but by spirit. You see, we don't pray until our bowls is full. Like seven bowls. Continuously with God's word. Continuously. We don't pray to completion because our bowls are halfway and then we stop and we tilt it over. Come on. And we never see breakthrough. These seven handstands with seven pouches. God says, as soon as all those sermons are full with the word of God that I speak to you, you constantly pray and pray and pray. And there's completeness, the bowls overflow. The breakthrough, the miracle started. He says, yeah, by my spirit of whom the oil is the symbol, says the Lord. The oil, God's word. Seven means completeness. Miracle, I've got, I'm connected here. I'm, I've got a relationship with God. I'm going to pray till my seven bowls are full. I'm going to pray till that bowls are overflowing. I'm not going to tip it over before the fulfilling that God has for me. You see, God, we pray, and God says, but I have not stopped. Still, I'm still speaking. And you say, oh, well, God, don't answer. Let me my post. Look for a prayer uh, for another vision. And God says, your bowls is halfway, and you doubt it. You had unbelief and you disconnect yourself from God. Elijah sent his sermon seven times. Zechariah speaks about seven spouts and seven bowls for oil constantly to fall, pour on them. Then your God, allow God to fill you up. Don't go and stop praying now. Don't stop giving up now. Come on, family of God, wait till those bowls are full of God's word, full of God's miracles, full of His promises. Amen. And then you walk in there and you say, This is completed. God has opened that door. Don't disconnect yourself from God before that. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so, seven times a day, Elijah told him to go and look. Finally, family of God, open those ears. Verse 44. Finally, the seventh time his servant told him, I saw a cloud about, about the size of a man's hand raising the sea. Raising from the sea. There was a sign, a symbol. The symbol was the hand. Now if you go to Jeremiah 1 verse 9, he says, Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I've put my words in your mouth. You see, the sun, the sun was God's hand. There was a hand. Let's be, the cloud was God's hand. The promises. You see, Elijah had to say him seven times. Elijah had to pray till it's completed. Elijah allowed God's word to be his new word. Elijah just prayed and prayed and he sent his servant to completeness. And there was a sign, there was a miracle. The miracle was God's hand. God says, I will reach out and touch your mouth. And I will put my words in your mouth. If you go to Isaiah 41 verse 10, let me just read it to you. Let me just read this. It says, for I hold, for I hold you by your right. For, oh, no, sorry. Don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. God says, I will touch you. You see, this, there could have been any sign when his servant went for seven time, But there was a sign of a hand. As big as a hand. The cloud was the size of a hand. There was a symbol. God promised, 
I'll lift you up with my righteous right hand. I will touch your mouth. Family of God, why do we give up in our prayer? Why don't we pray till it's completed? Let us pray continuously, receiving the word of God, receiving the word of God, till our bowls, seven bowls, are completed and it's full, so that God can send us forth. Amen? Amen. Then Elijah shouted, Hurry to Abba, tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop. And as soon as the sky was black with clouds, a heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm. And a heart left quickly for Jericho. Then the Lord gave, family of God, listen here, verse 46, then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. I love that word. You see, he, he completed his prayer. He prayed them into completeness and then God gave him a special strength. Amen? Amen. Family of God, the Lord will give you a special strength if you can pray it in complete, to, to complete it. If you can trust Him. If you can stay connected with Him. And I want to give you a word this morning. And I want to say to you what God has revealed to me on Friday. It's a special strength. Special strength. Now, listen to me. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. It existed in the beginning of God. So the Word was there from the beginning. It was there. It settled. Amen? Now listen to the special strength. Are you ready to... To, go, to continue to go pray again till your, your bowls are full with God's oil, with His Word, to get that special strength. Now, this is Jesus walking on water. He says, But Jesus spoke to them once. Uh, immediately after this, Jesus ins insisted that His disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up in the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. But at three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on water. When the disciples saw him, Walking on water, they were terrified in fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on water. Now, how do you think Peter walked on water? That, that's a special strength. That's something special. Peter. God allowed Peter to walk on water. Why? Because the word was there. He walked on water because in the beginning was the word and the word was God there. It was it existed from the beginning. Jesus is the word. Christ is the word. Christ was walking on water. Christ was on the water. And Christ allowed Peter to come to him because Peter had the word, all the with him. But when he started doubting, he disconnected him for a while and he drowned almost. You see, there's a special strength. And God says the word is there. And that special strength is in the word. If we can hold on to the word and we can play, pray into completeness, God's going to give you the strength walk on water. Why? Because you're going to have the word with you. The word is there. Don't doubt, family of God. Don't stop. Don't give up too soon. Pray till it's completed. If you know God has spoken to you, if you know God has given you this vision, it's up to you to stay connected with God. It's up to you 
to pray that his bowls is full of God's word. The only way we can see the miracle, we see the miracle followed Elijah. The miracle followed Peter because Peter had the word. And because of the word, he could walk on water because the word was there. It was with him. Elijah knew he had to pray it through to be completed. And he saw it as a symbol. There was a miracle, there was a sign. And the cloud was big as a hand. And God says, I've got you in the palm of my hand. I've described the image of you on the palms of my hand. Pray through. Hold on to God's word. Speak God's word. You're going to walk on water because of the word that is with you. Don't disconnect yourself. Connect with Christ. Stay. If you don't see that door open, pray. Pray. Pray until God says, it is done. But we give up. So this week, family of God, wherever you stop praying, wherever you stop believing, Go and connect yourself with the Holy Spirit. Go and connect yourself with Christ and start praying and praying till it's completed. Christ loves you. He has the best. You, you can't even imagine what, what, what future God has for you. And the only way we can enter that promise is if we stay connected with Him. Family of God, let us pray and just give God honor and don't stop speaking the word of God. Don't stop holding on to the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. And wherever we have turned our backs like the Israelites did and went back to where you have delivered us from, Lord. I pray right now that you will forgive me. Forgive us. Lord, wherever we stop praying for breakthrough, for miracles, because we started doubting again, Lord, please forgive us. Lord, we're going to pray until you say it's completed. We're going to trust until you say the door will be open. Now is the time to open it. Not my timing, but your timing. All I have to do is stay connected with the Word of God. Because when the word is of God is within me, the word is with me, I will get a special strength that only you can give me. A special breakthrough that is only from you. Lord, we thank you for this morning's word. We want to give you all the honor and the glory. And Lord, we thank you that we are connected with you. And no weapon form against us are prosper because there's no more disconnection. We are connected because we are going to focus on our relationship with our Heavenly Father. We honor you, we love you, and we glorify you for this this morning. Amen. And we of God may have an awesome week. And please, I'm asking you, stay connected with Christ. Have an awesome, awesome week. We love you. Stay blessed.